this is Kenneth Wong, DE Magazine Editor, and welcome to another episode of DE Video News Roundup. Last week in Santa Clara, the Augmented Reality Expo, known as AWE, took place, drawing a crowd of more than 7,000 attendees with 250 exhibitors. One of the exhibitors is Lenovo, here to introduce its first enterprise-targeted AR headgear. It's called Think Reality A6. This aligns with other Think-branded products like its workstation line, ThinkStation. The device is to be powered by a small smartphone-sized compute box that you can carry in your pocket if you'd like. In this box is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 Mobile XR processor. The augmented reality devices well, augmented with Lenovo Software Kit, which contains sample applications like remote assistance apps. The company expects that the developers will take the sample app and customize it for their own purpose, for their own vertical industries like manufacturing, healthcare, architecture, and so on. Also at the show is Unreal, another AR glasses maker. It lets you project digital objects and scenes onto surfaces in the real world like table tops. Unreal's glasses look natural and fashionable. They could easily be mistaken for regular sunglasses or casual glasses. Both Lenovo's Think Reality and Unreal power their devices from a small portable computation device, a solution that lets you roam without being attached to a powerful workstation with a cord. This is an important feature in training applications where you want the trainee to have real unrestricted movements that replicate what they would have to do in the real operation like aerospace repair or automotive assembly lines. Some might argue with a portable compute box you can only run lightweight AR, not high resolution AR. There is some truth to the limit in visuals with that approach, but for many AR training and design review apps, the key is to see digital objects in the real world to understand how they fit, not necessarily to inspect the digital model in glorious photorealistic details. So, a lightweight approach and the freedom to move would be ideal for many applications. Also at the show is Varo, which offers what it describes as the first human eye resolution VR. Varo's headgear is called XR1. It includes built-in eye tracking. In other words, you can use your eyesight itself where you choose to focus on as the pointer and the mouse cursor in the VR environment. This feature lets you build hands-free training, where you want the trainee's hand to be free so they can perform some complex manual tasks, not dealing with joysticks and controllers for selections and mouse clicks. So, how would you categorize hologram? Is it AR, VR, MR, or XR? Well, that's still up for debate, but looking glass, a hologram display system is also at the all conference. As a static display box, looking glass gives you the wow factor, but not much else. Things get much more interesting with the addition of interaction. You can rotate zoom holograms using the touchscreen method. You can also use a virtual hand inside the holographic environment to touch, squeeze, or poke the pixels, so to speak. The company thinks some simulation users may be interested in using hand gestures as input for load and stress examination. Imagine, if you will, being able to simply press down on a 3D model and see its physically accurate deformation. The harder you press, the stronger the force you apply. This is in line with the simulation software makers who want to enable early stage design phase simulation usage, where instant feedback is more important than accuracy. With the rise of AR VR hardware comes the need to publish AR VR content like apps for design review, training, remote technical assistance, or maintenance instructions. This is the sector where vendors like Scope AR would like to play in. The company's work link publishing software lets you use CAD data to produce instruction manuals compatible with mobile devices and AR headsets. Perhaps a sign of the cloud computing era, Scope AR offers its software by subscription under the SAAS model. Or is a three-day, dare I say it, awesome event with lots of cutting-edge AR gear that shows you where the industry is heading. For more engineering and design-related news, please go to Digital Engineering 24-7, that is digitalengineering247.com. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel called DE Streaming. For now, I leave you with some footage from the show floor as I signed off. Until next time, this is Senior Editor Kenneth Wong for DE.